If you watch or read enough car reviews, you've undoubtedly heard people like me gripe about the fact that new cars are so good today, it's hard to find anything to complain about. Well, let me introduce you to the 2018 Mitsubishi Outlander, an SUV that's shockingly out of step with the most competitive segment in the world. How does it look? There's nothing egregious about the styling of the Outlander, save for the extra large front and rear overhangs that make it look a bit like an ode to SUVs of the 90s. But the body shape actually reminds me of a tall wagon more than an upright compact crossover, and the grill treatment is fairly aggressive. How's the storage? So there are 61 available cubic feet of space behind the second row, and that's a lot smaller than competitive vehicles like the Toyota RAV4 and the Dodge Journey. And partially that's because Mitsubishi has packaged in this dinky third row, which also makes the load space narrower and with a higher floor. Your bases are covered here, but with no extras. There are two cup holders up front, an average size bin under the armrest, and medium volume door pockets. There's also this tiny horizontal pocket for the key fob, I think. Is it roomy? Space in the front of the Outlander is more or less on par with the segment, though tall folks like me will want to try before they buy. The seat's lowest position still leaves me sitting like a bus driver, with the wheel much lower than I'd really like. The back seat, again, thanks to the useless third row, is a tragedy in terms of legroom. Consider that the Nissan Rogue is almost exactly the same length overall and yet offers nearly 10 inches more second row legroom. And while Mitsubishi may market the Outlander as a three row vehicle, you won't be able to use it like one. Some kids may be able to sit side saddle back here, but buckling in two humans over five years of age seems irresponsible. How does the interior feel? Now listen, I know that lots of car reviewers out there have been slagging off Mitsubishi for a while, and the truth is that I haven't been an Outlander in quite a while, so I really wanted to come to it with a fresh mind. But the fact of the matter is, there's just a lot of stuff in this interior that's unacceptable for a $34,000 vehicle. I mean, you start to look around and you see panel gaps, and you see fit and finish issues, like the weird way this door card comes into the door controls here. It just feels like there wasn't a lot of attention lavished on the design. And maybe the most egregious example of that is looking at the layout of this center stack. All of these elements are moving slightly over to the right as you go from the bottom to the top, probably because they put a new head unit in. But again, it's just not well integrated and doesn't feel like a modern vehicle circa 2018. Is it well equipped? This is the top end Outlander GT trim level, meaning it gets just about all the equipment Mitsubishi has to throw at it. Outside, you'll spot it by way of the GT badging and 18 inch wheels. Inside, you'll find the seven inch infotainment screen, a 710 watt nine speaker stereo and dual zone climate control. Finally, from a safety standpoint, you get blind spot warning and rear cross traffic alert, while the optional $1,000 GT Touring package adds on forward collision mitigation, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise, and auto high beams. How's the infotainment system? The good news first, this seven inch screen is actually really responsive and offers Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you primarily navigate and get your media via your smartphone, you should be okay. The bad news is slightly more diverse. I'm not sure what Pixie designed this teeny tiny volume knob, but my sausage-like fingers have a hard time grabbing it without also activating something on the touchscreen. Changing channels on the satellite radio, for some reason not active on my tester, seems to require three digits at a minimum. And the baked-in app selection is downright bizarre. Why is there a standalone app for air conditioning? And who at Mitsubishi is trolling us with this retro fabulous clock app. Is it a good daily driver?
So I understand that Mitsubishi has actually made pretty impressive improvements in this Outlander versus the last one. That being said, these things don't happen in a vacuum. And on a day-to-day -day basis, the Outlander is simply a little bit worse to a lot worse than any other competitor in the segment. Let's talk about the steering to start, shall we? This rack is just super vague, as evidenced by me doing this, and the vehicle not really moving all that much. It's definitely not a confidence-inspiring uh, steering tune. And the other weird thing about it is when you actually do turn in and it bites, it turns in really quickly, uh, so it's actually a little bit difficult to anticipate and be smooth. Another thing that's a little weird is for a crossover, I find the throttle tip-in really strangely aggressive, too. And then finally, well, like I said, it has improved. The overall noise, vibration, and harshness, especially wind noise and road noise on the highway, is still a lot higher than I would expect from a compact crossover. Is it fun to drive? Well, you've got to say one thing for the Mitsubishi. It is one of the very few competitors in this segment that still offers a V6. So it doesn't feel slow. At the same time, the output from the V6 is not particularly impressive. We're only talking about 224 horsepower and 215 pound-feet of torque, so there are a lot of 2.0-liter turbos that make more power than that these days. I guess one positive from the weird steering experience here is that there is a surprisingly high amount of road feel that comes through the wheel. I'm just not sure who cares about that in an SUV. And listen, I know it's silly because this is a six-speed auto and not a dual clutch, and this is an Outlander and not an Evo, but I do like the fact that the paddle shifters are, remind me of the Evo paddle shifters, so that makes it a little bit more fun. How's the fuel economy? The penalty for picking the three liter is very poor fuel economy indeed. EPA ratings are 27 highway and 20 city, and the combined rating of 22 miles per gallon is a little worse than one of the only other six cylinder competitors here, the Jeep Cherokee. How much is it? The most basic front drive four cylinder Outlander starts at $23,495, which would be a competitive price if the hardware were even close to matching the rest of the segment. My tester wears a sticker price of $34,160, which is outrageous. If you have that much money to spend on a small crossover, buy anything else. What are the negatives? If you've watched this far and are still unable to pick out the negatives, then I suggest you rewind and rewatch. Frankly, the Outlander just isn't a very nice vehicle to spend time in. Who should buy it? I suppose if you absolutely have to have a really, really tiny third row of seats and want to spend the smallest possible amount of money, this is your boy. But realistically, you should spend your money elsewhere.